I have an interview right now, another one, with a flight instructor and a former student at University of North Dakota, Luke Werner. And Luke and I are going to have a whatever conversation we have. We're going to have a... That's right. Luke is about ready to move on out of here, so this is going to be a really fun conversation because he's got his future is on his doorstep right now. So uh, let's start off, uh, Luke, by uh, telling me what part of the country you grew up in. I grew up in Texas, South Central Texas, a uh, small town called New Braunfels. Yeah, I know New Braunfels. Yeah? Yeah. That's a good place to grow up in. It was. It's northeast of San, San Antonio. Yep, about, uh, about half an hour. Is there a, a John Newcomb tennis center? There is. There is. See, I knew that. So what, I know where you're from. How do you know how do you know about John Newcomb? Well, I have a son who actually is a son that got me involved with all this. Okay. Uh, so we, I can go ahead and tell you that story. A year ago I started. But he was a tennis player, and we were looking for a place at the time where we may, you know, that's a boarding school there. Yep. It can be a boarding yep. school. Yep. And so... Newcombs was one of the places that that I went with him to check out. When did you first get uh, interested in aviation, and particularly when it was the first time you had your first flight? Oh wow! Well, um, I was I've been interested in aviation for years. I grew up with I grew up loving anything any kind of machinery that moved, planes, trains, automobiles, you name it. I was I was interested in it. And um, uh, specifically, my first flight, my first airplane ride, would have been I was ten months old, something like that. Ten, ten months, months or something, ten months, or something like that. But um, it was um, on an annual trip that we take every year to um, see our I have family up here in northern Minnesota. So we we came up here for about a week to ten days every single summer, and so. I was very young when I was introduced to, to aviation. Yeah. Um, first flight at the controls was in November of 2006 in a Cessna 172. Um, and uh, it was a half hour discovery flight at, my, at the local flight school. And it ended up being the place that I learned how to, I learned, I did my private pilot training. It was at the same school. In New Braunfels. In New Braunfels. Awesome. So it all started right there. Uh, it was about another year. Um, it was another year before I started, almost another year before I started training. And uh, so between my, the summer between my uh, junior and senior year in high school, I started training and then it kind of progressively went on throughout my senior year in high school. Finished my private pilot certification 10 days before registering for classes here. Ten days. Ten days. So I was all set. I had my ticket. I was ready to go. And um, so it was, uh, it was a really good experience. I'm glad I, I'm glad I was able to have that experience uh, prior to coming, to coming here. So that did make a difference? For me, for me, I think it did. Not terribly much. We still have to go through a kind of... Um, it's a it's a short course that introduces you to UND's policies and procedures and and the the aircraft because obviously I was uh, I was flying different aircraft back home I was flying a Cessna 152 and a Cessna 172 and I came here and I started flying Piper Warrior so it was an it was a good transition for me um, so they want you they want you to be up to speed before you start instrument training which is kind of the next phase of the game. Um, that you'll go into when you when you start here at UND. I see. So you, uh, you came up and you have this preliminary course, so you mm -hmm. learn where the flying areas are yep. and how you schedule and that that sort That's of correct. thing. That's correct. But you don't have to go through any kind of uh, orals and flight checks and stuff. There is there is a there is an oral there is a there is a flight at the end. Um, so they do want to check and make sure that you have the required knowledge to be able to move on, but so that you are ready for that instrument training when it happens the next semester. And the course lasts, you know, the course lasts it's roughly half a semester. So, you know, you're you're all set, you're done by the end of the semester, you're ready to start instrument training. There's really it it uh, it's uh, you're ready to go 
for instrument training when that starts in the next the next semester. Sure. So everybody's blended together then. At that Everybody time. is blended together at that point. All the new private pilots that are that had no flying experience coming in, and then the the previously certified pilots that that are now up to UND speed. And and uh, do you have any idea how many? And I'm sure it varies with every freshman class. But any idea of how many of the incoming freshmen are were like you that had some previous experience? I want to say it's probably somewhere close to ten percent. Oh, so it, it is a fair amount. It's a fair amount. So let's jump ahead of UND now because this is an exciting topic for you. It is. And, uh, so tell me the story here now. You uh, uh, take me back to where you first applied with SkyWest. Why SkyWest? Uh, tell me. Tell me the. Well, I applied to SkyWest in probably I think it was September. So it was not all that long ago. No. No. Sept this it was August or September. It was not that long ago. Wow. So it's good. Yeah. It happens fast. It really does. Um, it took uh, a couple weeks before I got a phone call from them. But um, but I was I was I was super excited. So the application was by internet? Internet. It was all on the internet. And to go to their website. How did I went to their website to apply and um, they have their own a lot of airlines will use the airline apps forum to where you can there's t there's a bunch of airlines that use use that format um, SkyWest is one of those that has their own application process they have their own separate process that they've built and put on their on their website and then that's what you did, did that's you do what it I did with anybody else I applied to Horizon Air as well yeah, what's your total okay. time now um, about 1360 1360. Approximately. Okay. And because you graduated from UND, you really only needed 1,000. That's to correct. Work, to work for, say, SkyWest. That is correct. So 1360 and uh, how much multi engine? Just rough numbers? 350. 350. 350. Okay. Uh, what else? ATP written's out of the way, of course. That's correct. Um, what else? No turbine time. Six hours, actually. Six hours, Six of, hours turbine of turbine time. time. Very good. <laughs> uh, it's not much, but it's something. <laughs> it's something, exactly. I have a turbine column. <laughs> and something's in it. That's right. <laughs> uh, so that's probably all the basics, really. Total time, turbine time, PIC time. PIC time. Um, I think there's an instrument time. I think they want to know about instrument time. Um, do you are you qualified to receive a restricted ATP? Do you meet the qualifications? Have you taken your ATP written? Boy, I'm trying to think of some other stuff. Um, Horizon wanted to know about well, and SkyWest asked about this on the interview. Wanted to know about stage check and or check ride failures and uh -huh. and um, um, both companies wanted to know about you know any. Um, disciplinary action taken by taken by previous employers or things like that. Um, drugs and alcohol, of course. Of course. Uh, big topics in aviation. Yeah. Um, those are the high points. Those are the high points. Yeah. Those are definitely the high points. Uh, and so. Uh, written application to both those carriers and then they brought you in for an interview as well. SkyWest uh, Sky brought me in for an interview and I was actually scheduled to interview with Horizon uh, this on Wednesday of this week and uh, since I, I really wanted the SkyWest job and I got the SkyWest job so I've, I was I decided not to not to pursue that avenue. Sure. So yeah I was taken I was flown to uh, Salt Lake City for an interview with, with SkyWest. Does SkyWest fly into here, or how did you get there? You know, they used to. Um, they used to have a, a Denver Grand Forks service that they flew under the United flag. And um, they that route just didn't prove to be as profitable for them, and they, they canceled that route. Uh, they actually had me drive down to Fargo, and I flew uh, United Express um, out to out to Salt Lake and, and back. Um, which is actually really cool because three of the legs, it was, you know, it was, you know, Fargo, Denver, 
Salt Lake, same route coming back. But three of those legs were on SkyWest flights, which is great because I could go up to the cockpit after after the flight and say, and talk to the to the to the crew and ask, do you have any do you have any words of wisdom for the for the interview? Perfect. So I got some I got some FaceTime with with the SkyWest employees and you know they talked about oh man good luck on the I, good luck on the interview and and uh, here's some tips I had a shoot out first officer that you know wrote down this whole list of stuff to. I was like, look over this, look over that, know this, know the length of the approach lighting systems, and you know. So he actually went, he actually wrote down a list, and it was really funny because um, I was sitting in the, I was sitting in, uh, I think it was, it was like in the third row, it was, wasn't really far back. And the flight attendant comes up to me. I, I talked to the to the first officer prior to the flight, and he, you know, I, the, we're tra- we're starting to get ready to go, so I went back to my seat. Anyway, so the the flight attendant comes back and and, and looks at me and says. Uh, the first officer sure would like to talk to you after the flight, and I'm like, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm in trouble. And um, and it was it was even more funny because I was actually sitting next to across the aisle from a uh, flight attendant, um, a flight attendant trainer, oh. who was actually observing the the the, the, uh, the flight attendant on that on that flight. And so I we got to talk, and I told her I was interviewing with Scott West, and she was excited. She was so excited. It's like I. You know, so many people in this company um, came up to me, and you know, when I talked to them about um, about interviewing with Sky West, and they said, "I hope, I sure hope you get to come work for us." It's everybody's so happy about being there. It's really cool. That's neat. It's really cool, and I got that same thing on the interview as well. Everybody that's there just absolutely loves their job, and they they look forward to coming to work. So good place to go. It, it yeah, it was a good place to go. I'm so, excited. So it, it, you, it's obvious. It shows. Mm-hmm. And that's good. Um, anything on that first officer's uh, list that uh, actually showed up in the interview? It it did actually. Um, that wow. question about approach lighting systems. They wanted me to draw a runway and and label all the parts of the, the lights and and whatnot. So I mean, I drew everything out that I remembered, and so I, I passed it over there, and and um, he basically looked at it and said, "Great." And <laughs> <laughs> that part was that, that we know our we know our runway markings, so we can move on. So that was that was good. That was a good one. That was helpful. It was it was very helpful. Talking that now, how did you go about talking to the first officer initially? Um, I mean, I just poked my head in the cockpit okay. before the flight and and afterwards, and so yeah, they were they were really happy. They were really excited. Of course, most of them were. Told me it's like well I interviewed three years ago it was kind of a different may have been a different process back then so and the, so the first officer had been there three years at this it, point so it most of most of the uh, most of the um, employees I talked to had been there for a decent amount of time two or three years or more um, there was one captain on the flight into Salt Lake actually that has had his interview with United that week so he was. Getting ready to he was blasting on. getting ready to hope, well hopefully hopefully he uh, had a successful interview. He's getting ready to jump move on to uh, to other things. I had my thousand hours in mid spring. Mid spring. However, I um, I took I I became a multi engine instructor over the course of last fall, and. If you if you do that as a full time instructor, post graduation, UND will actually give you they'll actually give you a discount rate on the aircraft to do that. So I actually saved about a thousand dollars by taking multi engine instructor here at UND as a as a graduate and as a as a full time instructor. And but in order to get that discount, they want you to flight instruct for them for about six months after your check ride. So my six months actually ended in uh, at the end of July. So I I was I, I stayed here to finish finish out that contract, and then by the end of the summer I was ready to sure ready to go. And that's when you applied. And that's you when I applied. Mid April or something. And that's, August, you said. And that's when I applied. That's <laughs> yeah. correct. So and you knew it was going to happen fast because you knew that people were leaving at a thousand hours and going right. You know, I really kind of didn't know what to expect. I didn't know whether I, I kind of thought that I would. I kind of thought that I would 
hear back pretty quick, but I didn't expect to be interviewing that quick. And I also didn't expect to uh, have a class date. They actually tried to, uh, when I got the job, they, they said, we'd like you to come for the October 20th class date. And, um, which is next week. Yeah. And this was, and I got this email last Tuesday, which is, you know, six days ago. And, you know, I, I really needed a little bit of extra time to, to I, A, turn in my two-week notice and um, just to get squared away to, to move. Is, is there some sort of path from UND to SkyWest? I mean, do they have any kind of flow-through or any kind of... They, do. they actually do now. They just, they just announced it not too long ago. And um, so it's kind of the latest in these series of, sometimes we call them pipelines. Gate, you know, we have the gateway program with JetBlue and Cape Air, and, and there's, the, um, there's a flow through with Endeavor and Delta. Um, so there's, it's kind of the latest and greatest in these. And, um, but it's really cool because you, you kind of start that interview process towards your junior, senior year in, in college. And, you know, by the time you have X number of hours and you've successfully completed all of these segments of the interview process, you're, you're offered a first officer position. Oh, even before you're out of school? Pretty much. So it, assuming you complete this number of, of, this amount of flight instruction or this many flight hours. I'm not terribly concerned of the, or sure of the, the exact details of that sure. one, but. So they have representatives from those companies that come here and do interviewing they do. while you're still in yep. college. Cool. That was, um, I was not, uh, this SkyWest program's too new for me to have been a part of it because this is just in the last couple months that this, is, oh. this has been developed. But, but uh, JetBlue, or Cape Air and JetBlue have been doing a similar program for, for several years with various schools, including, including UND. Do, uh, do you know of anybody that's gone directly from here to JetBlue? Not aware. But they do interviewing and mm -hmm. essentially qualify you to be an interview by if, them. If you, you have to fulfill a certain amount of time at UND as a flight instructor and then Cape Air as a first officer oh, slash, see. well, then transition to captain. And, and then after so many years as a captain, you get an interview with, at, at JetBlue. So it's a, it's a flow through from yes. here to Cape and then on to JetBlue. Yep, oh, that's I see. correct. I see. 